State Representative Trom Wynn is our guest this morning. Wynn is pushing to strengthen the state's hate crime statutes, working on a bill that would increase penalties as crimes against Asian Americans are growing here in Massachusetts and across the country. Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Welcome to OTR on this Sunday morning. I'm Ed Harding along with New Center 5's political reporter Janet Wu. It is the last weekend in March. And as we have been for the last year, we continue to observe all social distancing protocols here in Studio C in Needham with plenty of space between Janet Wu and me. And joining us via Zoom, again with plenty of space, is our guest this morning, State Representative Trom Wynn. Wynn represents the 18th Essex dis District, which includes parts of Andover, Boxford, North Andover, and Tewksbury. Our first generation Vietnamese American immigrant. She was the first of her family to attend college and then law school, graduating from Tufts before earning her law degree at Northeastern. It's great to have you with us this morning. Thank you for your time. Let's Thank just, you so much for having me. Let's just drop right in, uh, Representative. Discrimination against Asians, as we talked about earlier, isn't new. Uh, there are millions of examples dating back to our great grandfathers building the railroad, but it rarely gets the attention of white America the way it is right now. Is it really much worse now than it has been in past years, Representative? Absolutely. The past 12 months, we've seen an increase of 150 uh, percent increase in anti-Asian violence. And this is happening in cities like L.A., New York, and even here in Boston. And as you said, Janet, this is a result of a long history of discrimination against Asians and Asian Americans in, in this country, and it culminated in the mass murder that happened in Atlanta um, a, a week and a half ago. Um, are you surprised that it took such a tragedy that finally it has become front and center for most Americans? I'm saddened and hurt and heartbroken that it took that sort of tragedy for us now to have this conversation. It is very interesting to me that, you know, uh, all these years um, and even within these past 12 months when Asian Americans have been scapegoated and blamed with all the misinformation about the start of coronavirus, mm -hmm. we've seen so many instances of especially the elderly and women being attacked. But that's not talked about in the news cycle or anywhere, rather, until this mass murder that resulted in eight deaths and six of whom are Asian uh, women. I want us to continue this conversation. And, and um, I am truly saddened that it just it took this much um, heart break for us to, to have these hard conversations uh, heart, right now. Heartbreak is a, is a wonderful word. I, um, I'm curious, just because you, you just touched on it a minute ago, the, the former president using the term to, to refer to the virus the way that he chose to refer to the virus. I'm hearing from you, the, the, actually the events in Atlanta might have been more of an igniter than what the former president said. Is that true? Well, well for someone to blame this virus that could have happened anywhere in the world and has indiscriminately affected everyone uh, globally, to blame this on China basically puts a targets on the backs of all people of Asian descent, especially here in this country. And this tragedy is really an interplay of many things, xenophobia, uh, uh, gender bias, racism. There's a lot at play here, but it starts, it could be traced back to that misinformation and scapegoating of a whole group of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it, disputes between blacks and Asians have been widely publicized for decades, and your generation has worked to unite various cultural groups. So if Black Lives Matter had not captured the country's narrative this past year, let me ask you, would the, would the killings in Georgia still be in today, front and center, not just in today's conversation, but front and center in today's conversation? I'm hardened to see the uh, um, solidarity and the emphasis on intersectionality. And I think that this um, partnership isn't new. Back in uh, during the time of the civil rights movement, uh, black activists and leaders have fought the way, uh, way and paved the way for other communities of color to speak up and fight for their rights. And so I feel like this is a pivotal moment in time for us to continue to build on that solidarity, to make sure that we amplify voices of people of color, to make sure that they know that we are paying attention, that their lives do matter, and that what, what is happening to them is not okay. None of this is okay. 
Um, President Biden now vows to appoint a senior level official to focus on Asian American issues at the White House. How much confidence does this give you that things will, well, frankly, will really, really change? I think that this is a start, but it really needs to start more. It, we need to do more at the community level to give people support, to empower them, to speak up. Uh, we all know that there is a underreporting of hate crimes, also an under prosecution of hate crimes. And so these are all things that need to be done at the local level. We also know that there is a lot of fear in our communities. There, um, even though a lot of folks think of Asian Americans as very successful and well to do, but we all know if we disaggregate the data, there are many communities, um, Asian communities, ethnic groups, particularly speaking as a Vietnamese American. Vietnamese Americans, for instance, 50, over 50 something percent of us don't speak English as our first language or have our limited English proficient, for instance. And so um, to empower these communities to um, to really seek assistance and to speak up um, is something that we need to do with uh, community leaders and those on the ground. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm glad to hear that uh, President Biden is doing that. But I also hope that he would consider assigning, uh, appointing an Asian American uh, into his cabinet because I think that representation really do matter. The, the, the group stop AAPI hate coalition has, has documented close to 3,000 hate incidents against Asian Americans between March and December of last year, just in that period, of, you know, that short, relatively short period of time, that large number. So how does your hate crime bill address this issue? And, and, and does it address all instances of hate? The goal of this uh, the hate crime bill is to make sure that it serves its intended purpose of holding perpetrators accountable, for, especially those who target people based on a protected class. And right now, Massachusetts has one of the weakest laws because our laws, uh, we have two statutes that are, are vague over and partially overlapping. So what this bill seeks to do is to combine these two statutes into one and to further clarify that certain behaviors such as violent, threatening, destructive behavior is not protected under the First Amendment. But also, the uh, one of the issues that we see in terms of uh, the prosecution of hate crimes is that oftentimes uh, law enforcement or the judiciary would have to prove that animus or the intentional targeting of a protected class is the only sole motivation. But as you can see, even with the example of the Atlanta shooting, uh, where the perpetrator claimed that he had a sex addiction, and that was why he went after these spies. Well, for most of these instances, there may be many motivation factors. And if one of the factors is based on a protected class, that we mm -hmm. should give the uh, prosecutors the opportunity to, to prosecute those crimes as a hate crime. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the pandemic. Vaccine rates among communities of color, blacks, Latinos, and Asians are astoundingly lower than white communities. Is it more of a distribution inequality or suspicion of the safety of the vaccines that's really the bigger problem here? I think it's a combination of both, and we need to be intentional about the distribution in, um, to communities of colors and communities that are um, hardest hit by the pandemic. Uh, and there are um, several bills relating to that that I um, am proud to support and that my colleagues have been working on. But uh, and to your point, yes, there is uh, vaccine hesitancy. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and we need to be intentional about making sure that these materials are available in different languages and that they're distributed in a very intentional way in partnership with community leaders who are trusted by our community members, make sure that they get the right information so that they can help disseminate that to our community members.